Espanyola. Hi guys, I hope you are doing well. Welcome to this FM Financial Management Fast Track course. My name is Lokman Rafiq and I am the instructor for this course, Financial Management. Um, you are watching this introduction session of the Financial Management <clears throat> and let me just guide you that uh, I am going to be delivering this course over the next 15 days and my whole agenda and objective is to make this fast track course available free of cost to all the participants who are going to be preparing for this ACCA paper. The course is going to be available for an indefinite period on our YouTube channels and on our Facebook pages and you could just view them and you could just refer them to your friends and colleagues who are going to be preparing these courses. <coughs> so let's just start off. My agenda for the session of today is I will be going through the financial management syllabus. I'll be discussing how this paper is examined. I'll be identifying the core areas of the syllabus and would be guiding you that what is the approach that I will be adapting in order to deliver this course. So the financial management as you know is uh, the what I have opened up in front of me is the syllabus guide and when it comes to the syllabus guide it's always important to look for the relational diagram of the paper. The relational diagram of this paper has got a management accounting paper at the base and then there are other papers like SBL and the AFM which are going to be relying upon the brought forward knowledge from the financial management examination. So as a student what you should know is that there is a brought forward knowledge from the management accounting paper that is going to be used for this financial management. Now, the management accounting paper, um, you have gone through it and it's, it's, it's a paper that is solely based on MCQs. But when it comes to the financial management paper, I'll guide you what is going to be the method of examination for this financial management paper. So when we talk about the ACCA financial management paper, the paper is examined on a computer base. It's a computer based paper which is examined four times a year. It's examined in March, it's examined in June, it's examined in September and then it's in December. The paper has got three sections which is section A, section B and the section C. What is there in section A, what is there in section B? So with respect to section A, this is a 30 mark section. Similarly, the section B is again a 30 mark section and section C is a 40 mark section. In the section A, the examiner, he tests 15 OTQs. What are these OTQs? So you need to understand there is a difference between an OTQ and an MCQ. An OTQ could have multiple things. It's not just going to be that you're given four options and you have to choose one option out of it. The objective test questions could include the MCQs. The objective test questions could include the fill in the blanks. It could include the drop down list. It could also include, it could also include the selecting multiple answers. So there could be multiple type of things that could be there. So that's why ACC has introduced objective test question, they have not introduced the MCQs, they have introduced objective test questions so that they can get a flexibility with respect to this uh, papers. Now the second thing that's there is the section number B. With respect to section B, what happens is that there are three case OTQs that are tested. What is this case OTQ? So the way the examiner asks this is that the examiner gives you a simple case study. And alongside that case study, the examiner asks you five OTQs for each of the case study. I repeat, what happens is that there are five OTQs for each of the case study that you have to answer. So what happens is that you get one single case study, 
and there are five OTQs. So one case study is of 10 marks. So the second is going to be again for 10 marks. The third one is again going to be for 10 marks. So it's 10 mark, 10 mark, 10 mark. That's how it is. And the third thing is, there is a constructed response questions when it comes to this one. And what exactly do you mean by constructed response questions? So there are two questions which are of 20 marks each. Under this constructed response questions, what happens is that you are being given a case study. And with this case study, you are being given uh, response options. And under the response options you can have, you can have a word processing document. You could have a spreadsheet also. I repeat, you could have a word processing document plus you could have a spreadsheet also. So this is something that you would have, a word processing document plus a spreadsheet that could be required for you to answer. Now let me just guide you. The word processing document that's available is different to the Microsoft Word that we normally use. The spreadsheet which is available is different to the Microsoft Excel that you use. There's a difference in functionality. There is a difference in the way these are operating. So you got to have practice on this relevant computer-based examination platform if you want to succeed in this. Now, let's move a bit forward. So when it comes to the slavers for the financial management, let me just guide you with respect to the slabus areas. You could see that there are these multiple slabus areas which are mentioned in here. I'm going to have a quick discussion of them and then I'm going to get into the details. So the multiple slabus areas include what? They include number one financial management function. This is an area that actually helps you understand what a financial management function does in an organization. In any organization, there is, not, there is usually no formal function of financial management, but generally different people in different departments have got the responsibility for managing the finances. So in general, the people who are given the responsibility of managing the finance, what are their responsibilities, what are the activities they do, what are the things that they do. So this is all that we are going to be discussing in here. This area is usually examined as an OTQ. It's very rare to see any constructed response question on this. They're usually part and parcel of the OTQs. Similarly, there is this financial management environment. Now let me just guide you what the financial management environment would cover. Again, this area would be tested in the form of OTQs. And this area, what it is actually going to cover up is that majorly. Um, when we operate as an entity, there is an environment that we are dealing with. There are banks, there are stock exchanges, there are capital markets, there are other type of financial markets that are existing. And what you have to do is that you have to deal with the government regulations, you have to deal with the competitive forces, you would have to deal with the different type of uh, recessions, the economic factors, all of these have to be dealt with in order to manage the finance. So here we would be talking about the financial management environment that an organization normally has. Then there is this working capital management. So what is this working capital management all about? When we talk about the day-to-day -day operations of an organization, so the amount of money that you need for the day-to-day -day operations of the organization. The day-to-day -day operations means like for example, if you want to make payment of salaries, if you, are, if you want to do purchases or you want to pay for other routine expenses, etc. So what do you need to do? You need to make sure, I repeat, you pay salaries, you do routine expenses, you do purchases. So you need money for that. How would you manage the money? So all this management would be covered up in the working capital management. And this could be an area that could be part and parcel of a constructed response question. This could be an area which could be part and parcel of the constructed response question. So you would have to be ready for this. Then there is this investment appraisal. What's an investment appraisal? Investment appraisal is all about a technique where we decide if we are going to be doing a capital nature expenditure. What do you mean by capital nature expenditure? Capital nature expenditure would actually mean purchasing a non-current asset, purchasing a plant, purchasing a machinery, launching some new product or upgradation of the existing plants and machinery. 
So is it going to be viable? Is it going to be worthwhile? Is it going to be giving you a payback? All of this is going to be, you would have to consider. So again, this specific area could be part and parcel of a constructed response. Then you've got the business finance. And when it comes to the business finance, <clears throat> so for the business finance, what you have is that there are two areas to business finance. The number one of them is the sources of finance, that where can you generate the finances from. And the second thing is the cost of those finances. I repeat, the second thing is the cost of those finances. So let me just guide you. One is what are the sources of the finances? And the second one of them is what is going to be the cost? Again, this area could be tested in the constructed response. Now, a lot of you people would have a question that you've identified three areas for the constructed responses, whereas there is only going to be two constructed response questions. So how is it all going to operate? So let me just guide you that um, there are three areas out of which constructed response questions could be tested, but generally any two areas are tested. So like it could not be that you just prepare for two areas, no, you would have to prepare for all three and the ACCA has a choice to ask for any two areas. So that is what is gonna happen here. Then there are these business valuations and the risk management area. What are the business valuations and the risk management area? So when it comes to business valuation area, we will study different techniques of valuing a business. There's a technique which is called asset base. There's a technique which is called income base. There's a technique which is called cash flow base. So there are different, different type of techniques that do exist. And what we would be doing is that we would be discussing those techniques we would be applying those techniques to the different scenario just to see that what could be the value of a business that is under consideration. And lastly, there is a risk management which has got two elements. And what are those two elements with respect to risk management? One of the element is the currency risk management and the other one of them is the interest rate risk management. Now, what are you going to be discussing in this currency risk management and interest rate risk management? So under the currency risk management, you would be dealing with the exchange rate risk that you face while dealing in a foreign currency. So when you're dealing in a foreign currency, you are living in UK and you have got exports to USA or you've got exports to Middle East or you've got exports to China. So how would you be dealing with your export receipts? If you are an entity which is importing from China and the, and the, and the, and the, and the imports are priced in terms of renminbis, so how would you be hedging the risk of the renminbi fluctuations? If you are importing oil from the, U, from, the, from the Middle East and you are being charged in the US dollars or you are being charged in any other currency, which is the local currency of that Middle East country, so how would you be hedging yourself against that risk? That is again we are going to be discussing. And lastly, the interest rate risk. What is the interest rate risk? If you are a borrower, if you are a lender, there is a potential for the movement in the interest rate risk. So how would you be dealing with this? That is also something that we would be going through. Now, I do have, I do have this whole detailed syllabus in front of me. But uh, what I'll do is that uh, I just, I've just given you a bit of an idea of what the syllabus areas are. Now, I need to discuss with you the approach, the strategy that I'm going to be adapting. So I, as I told you, that I'll be completing the whole course over the next 15 days. The lectures that are going to be delivered will be exam focused and inshallah, inshallah, if you just focus on these lectures, you will be able to achieve the pass. The reason being that they are very much exam focused, they cover maximum areas, the core areas of the syllabus and uh, focusing on these areas, going through the relevant practice would inshallah help you go through. So I would be picking up different areas. I would have a quick revision of those areas and after going through the quick revision I would discuss the OTQs and if relevant the constructed response questions pertaining to those areas so that's something that I would be doing so basically this is an opportunity for all of you who are preparing for these papers it's an opportunity uh, it's a free of cost resource that is being made available to you people just to make sure just to make sure that you are able to just to make sure that you are able to pass, just to make sure that you are able to flourish. So I would invite all of you to stay connected, to benefit from these resources <clears throat> and to share these resources 
with your friends, with your colleagues and with other acquaintances who you think are actually uh, going to be studying these courses. So thank you very much for connecting with me today. I look forward to having you people again tomorrow and day after and so on and so forth, reviewing the whole course so that you are able to pass through. Thank you very much. This is Lokman